Well, the 2011 MLS Super Draft has concluded. The teardown is going pl taking place right now alongside Greg Lawless from MLSsoccer.com. Greg, I just wanted to uh, get a little bit of your, some of your thoughts about how the draft and the proceedings of the day's events have gone on and what has really stood out for you. Well, I think the thing that stands out most for me is the fact that there were so few trades, actually. There were really only four moves in the first uh, round and a half, let's say, and I thought there were going to be some more. I thought that Vancouver Portland might actually look to ship those early picks that they had somewhere else to get more players, get maybe a more established player than they have right now. Instead, they went with the young kids, uh, you know, going out and getting Omar Salgado, a 17-year-old, picked up for uh, Vancouver, and then uh, Perry Kitchen going to, sorry, Darlington Nagby going to Portland. That's right. Texas native uh, Omar Salgado as well, so congrats to him as the first overall pick. Uh, were there any surprises for you in terms of where players went, where they fell to or moved up? What, what did you see from that? Well, I think there are a couple of names that pop out for me, Michael Farfan, midfielder from North Carolina, Anthony uh, um, Ampai Pataquan from University of Akron. <laughs> yeah, he had a, he had such a great college career, and I think he didn't really help himself at the combine. But you know, if you look at his body of work, as they say, uh, he had a terrific college career. I think that the fact that he fell so far that was one thing. And then going the other way, you had Joao Plata, an Ecuadorian kid up from Liga de Quito down in Ecuador, had a fantastic, really really amazing combine. Showed all sorts of skill and speed, he actually ends up dropping to the third round. Uh, any surprise in uh, John Rooney about where he fell, got picked up by the Red Bulls in the second round? Did you see that happening? Well, you know, I, I was surprised it was New York. Then again, you have uh, the Red Bulls that uh, they were squeaking, let's say, <laughs> the entire time, wondering what was going to happen with John Rooney. Um, but look, he, he was taken by the Red Bulls, who we know are a club that they're not afraid to pick a player that they know will make a little bit of buzz, mm -hmm. and he will. And I think that John Rooney might have enough, if he develops over the next couple of years, mm -hmm. to actually be much more of a help than just a name. Oh, that's excellent. And let's talk a little bit about FC Dallas now, Greg. Uh, Bobby Warshaw was the first pick taken by FC Dallas. What did you see from him at the Combine, and, and how does he impact FC Dallas now? Well, I thought Warshaw actually had a really good Combine. looked good down there. He, I think the fact is that he's composed. He can play either in the back or he could play in the defensive midfield. And considering now that there are about 47 defenders in the FC Dallas roster <laughs> at this point, and, and of course there's always, is Breck Shea going to play center back? And all, so who knows what's going to happen? But lots of options right there. Um, I think Bobby Warshaw is a good pick. A kind of guy who, under Shellis Hyman's tutelage, could really develop into something just the way George John has. And the other two players, Scott Gordon was taken last, but also you had uh, Campbell taken as well out of the uh, University of Louisville. What did you see from those two players, and what little bit do you know about them that uh, they could perhaps now aid FC Dallas as well? Yeah, not much. You know, um, Campbell, playing for the University of Louisville, showed that he's got sort of a championship caliber in him, Took him helped t take uh, the Cardinals all the way to the NCAA final, um, where they lost to the University of Akron. But I felt like they did it, that he showed enough that second round, late second round, that's about right for him. I don't know how much he's really going to help Dallas considering all the talent that they have uh, in that midfield anyway. But um, in the final pick, Scott Gordon, all anyone can say is, well, he's 6'4 and 190 pounds, so you've got some size and it's something to work with. Yeah, so certainly an athletic player, versatile player that uh, Shell Assignment certainly looks for uh, to his staff. Was there any final thoughts you'd like to add on uh, the day's events? I have a name that was not picked by FC Dallas. I'm really sorry about that. But somebody I think should not have dropped to the second round is Michael Tete. He's a guy who I think is an incredible athlete. He didn't really show very well at the combine. However, I expect this guy to end up being a starting back or left back or left midfield. And just keep an eye out for him. That's my guy. Okay. Well, Greg Lawless, thanks so much for joining us. And hey, thanks, uh, appreciate all you've done for us. You got it.